Reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. Oh, oh, oh mama. Oh, mama. Mama, mama. Garnet Silk was one of the brightest stars to ever shine in the reggae galaxy. During his short, illustrious career, Garnet Silk was hailed by many as the next Bob Marley. After five years of lewd and rude dancehall lyrics, Garnet ignited the stagnant music arena with Roots Rasta music. This is the place to be for your reggae gist, facts, and culture. He is credited as the artist most responsible for the conscious and spiritual resurgence of early 90s reggae. His profound lyrics and distinctive vocal styling a throwback to the poignant messages of the Marley era captured an international audience. Sadly, on December 9, 1994, the 28-year-old Garnett Silk, along with his mother, perished in a fire. You are welcome back to another crucial video by Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extra's Garnet Silk Edition. This episode is strictly about Garnet Silk, his career, his contributions to reggae music, and his death. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. I, there was a show there that night. i never forget the Manchester Plaza. I was there performing and I performed and Garnet should come and close the show because that was his set. That was that's all, all, all the, the stage, the, the setting was. He was to come and close the show and you know my brother after i work and come out on the balcony and ringing out i never forget ringing out marina card sweat and my whole body wet and we see a fire over at field side and i said wait which fire that and same time i said boy you must key in my body now but i said no but no can feel no there yes sir i was going to drive out and reach town and fatis get the car and him said boy can it die you know so then burn him up in a fire and one over and sit there. So from there and then I'm at a right at the way I take on put on my clothes and call Mike General and drive back to Mandeville. By the time we reached by Mandeville it was daylight and we went to the mall where they brought his body and and asked him to make me see them body. But Mike General Luciano talking about the death of Garnet Silk to Lyric DVD. It might interest you to know that Garnet Silk was born Garnet Damien Smith in Manchester, Jamaica, on April 2nd, 1966, and on December 9th, 1994, he perished alongside his mother, Edgar Dulcie Gray, in an accidental fire that consumed his childhood home in the parish of Manchester. Family, friends, music industry colleagues, and fans worldwide were shocked and saddened by his unexpected and heartbreaking death. The tragedy occurred inside this one-room house around midnight. According to official report, Garnett Silk had borrowed a pair of guns from his attorney after his home had been burglarized, but had no idea how to use it. Sitting with a couple of friends at his mother's house in Mandeville, Jamaica, on December 9th, one offered to show him how it worked at this point the gun accidentally misfired, hitting a propane tank and setting the house ablaze. The singer, his friends, and his two brothers made it out safely, only to discover that Silk's mother was still trapped inside. Silk rushed back into the house to save her, but it was too late, and both were lost in the fire. It should be noted that the said one-room house is still standing there till today. It's very small with two sets of doors, one at the front and another at the back, and two windows at the front and one at the side. Yet Garnett Silk and his mother never made it out of this small house. However, numerous other theories have been in circulation. Some say he went to confront thieves who were said to be taking material from the property of a home Silk was building. They say that he and his mother were murdered, and it was made to look like an accident. Some even said Garnett Silk never ran out the house and he was shot at the side of his head and died before the fire. Growing up in the Hatfield District, about two miles west of Mandeville, Jamaica, Garnet's early inspirations were Marley and Burning Spear. Until 14 years of age, he attended Hatfield All-Age School, where, besides writing, he admits he had no favorite subject. Sport was a different matter, and he always enjoyed playing soccer. 
Garnet admitted that he was popular at school because he could sing and DJ. When he first performed as Little Bimbo with the sound system Soul Remembrance at the age of 12, Garnet discovered an outlet for his thought-provoking lyrics and an audience outside of his schoolmates and family. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra's Garnet Silks Edition. In 1985, the renamed Bimbo released his first single, the locally recorded Problem Everywhere, produced by Delroy Callow Collins for the rhythm track label at Roof International in Ocho Rios. It was not until he moved to Kingston in 1988 that the name Garnet Silk became recognized in the bubbling reggae community. Although, initially spelled Garnet, when asked, the young singer clarified in the 1994 Reggae Report interview that there was only one T and questioned, what's the use of using two? In 1992, Tony Rebel, a popular DJ and close friend, introduced Garnet Silk on stage at White River Reggae Bash in Ocho Rios. In 1986, Rebel and dub poet Yasu Zafari introduced Garnet to the teachings of Rastafari, a discovery that altered his life forever. Born into the tribe of Reuben, Garnet has claimed no organized affiliation. I see myself as a son of Ethiopia, Garnet declared. Ethiopia, where all things started. Garnet Silk was committed to the teachings of Emperor Haile Selassie I, the cornerstone of Rastafari. This was his sole purpose, he was spiritual in what he was doing. Garnet Silk's first major hit, Hello Mama Africa, produced by Richard Bello Bell at Star Trail Studio, was unleashed in 1992. To this day, Hello Mama Africa is the most popular Garnet Silk song ever recorded. Other hits, such as Placing Your Heart and Zion in a Vision, soon followed. The young singer was quickly catapulted to number one positions on Jamaican, U.S., British, Canadian, and Japanese reggae charts. All throughout the next year, Garnet Silk recorded continuously and toured extensively, filling clubs and concert halls in America, England, Bermuda, and Japan. The pace was so grueling that on July 16, 1993, he had to leave the stage during a performance at the Ritz Theater in New York City. Diagnosed with low blood pressure and exhaustion, he went under doctor's orders to take rest. Garnet retreated from the limelight. His fragile health was the reason given for the cancellation of his debut reggae Sumfest performance that summer of 93. After a brief respite in Ocho Rios, Garnet was back on his feet. By the beginning of 1994, Garnet Silk was ready to continue his musical quest. He was signed with Carry On Productions for recording and management and, through Callman's championing, had secured his first major label deal with Big Beat Atlantic Records. His comeback performance was at Rebel Salute, Tony Rebel's annual birthday concert, in January 1994. Mandeville's Fair's Entertainment Center was packed solid, and fans waited in the pouring rain until 6 a.m. to witness the much-anticipated return of Garnet Silk. From the end of 1993 and throughout 1994, Garnet Silk recorded mostly for Carry On. His team kept him busy with shows and tours and wound up in Montego Bay where he delivered sizzling and momentous performances at Reggae Sunsplash and Reggae Sumfest. Garnet Silk's final performance was at the Mirage Nightclub in Kingston the Tuesday night before the fire. Driving in from Greenville in Manchester, where he was building a two-story home for his mother, Garnet was eager to be a part of good friend Richie Stevens' birthday celebration. Another extraordinary singer, Richie Stevens and Garnet Silk joined forces earlier in 94 to record Fight Back, a popular anthem for the oppressed. This song was gaining steam internationally after enjoying several weeks at number one on the Jamaican charts. His philosophy and favorite quote sum up Garnet Silk's life, Seek ye the kingdom of God and all necessary things shall and will be added to you. Love your mummy and daddy and your brothers and sisters as you love yourself, and love Jah with all your heart. Be obedient, kind and willing, and you will live forever. Garnet lived and died for his family, and the legend will live on through his beloved seven children. 
His devoted wife Lovey bore their fourth child, a son rightly named Garnet Jr., on April 3, 1995, only a few months after the fire and one day after his famous father's birthday. Silk's music has been kept alive by several tributes, including Maccabee's tribute to Garnet Silk and the Earth Day concert, and numerous compilation albums, including two collections of his dub plates, Kilimanjaro Remembers Garnet Silk, Jam Down, 1999, and Rule Dim, Trojan, Sanctuary 2006. Silk's son Garnet Smith Jr. has followed him into a career in music. Silk's nephew, Anthony Cruz, recorded a tribute album in 2013, featuring cover versions of 15 of Silk's songs. His inner light and childlike joy are forever deeply missed, yet you will live on through his music and message. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.